And you know, you said something there. I mean, your incident was 2003. Mine was 2004, September 2004. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's very, very visceral for me. And you said something about, I learned something through it. And, and you said you mentioned, you realized that you wanted to help, you learned leadership and you wanted to help other people. And so when I sold my business, suddenly I, I, I thought, what am I going to do now? And I started investing in real estate and, uh, and acquiring other businesses. But then I was still unfulfilled and I was thinking, where's this coming from? And that's when I realized that there are pe people were asking me to help them with their business and I helped them fix it. And I, I was doing that for free. I had no idea there was something called coaching. And when I realized that, I, I decided to make it my mission just to work with people. And I wrote this mission down, which was to inspire, educate, and empower people to live a life of joy, courage, passion, and purpose. And since 2005, 2006, that's what I've been doing, helping others to really live their full potential, just like you did with leadership, right? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because our timing is very similar because I started doing this full time in uh, late January 2006. So wow. we uh, we were kind of across the globe, but uh, doing similar things. One thing that strikes me interesting is that you had in this business major problems with partners. And yet one of the things you've come out with that it appears to be one of your strengths and kind of a unique thing is you now advise people on the value of doing joint ventures, whereas you know your first nightmare was a joint venture that went sour. And so, so it's kind of like, I, I love it because kind of like me with leader, I realized I wasn't a great leader, although I had, you know, I might look like it or had some attributes and you kind of went, you didn't have a good joint venture and then you figured out what makes a good one. So I want to learn more. I mean, what, what, what led you to that instead of running the opposite direction and just saying, I'm not dealing with people anymore. I'm doing my own thing. Yeah, it's a great thing. You know, everything, I, I believe everything happens for a, a reason, there's a purpose behind all this thing. And when I was going through my tribulations with these partners, and even with my staff and team as well, one of the things I've, let, I, I've read later on, and I learned later on, was a principle that big organizations use and the army uses, which is what they call a code of honor. And a code of honor is simply a set of rules that govern the behavior of individuals on a team. I mean, you teach culture, you teach leadership, you know what I'm talking about. But at the, in those days, I had no clue why my team, my partners were behaving the way they were behaving. And clearly there were values that I had that they didn't have. There were values that I upheld that they didn't uphold. And so I was in this quagmire and this mess because of human beings. Left to my devices, I could, I could have carried on running my business, but I, you, can't run, you can't grow a business, as you know, on your own to any significant level. So when I learned about Code of Honor, which is just a set of rules around values and, uh, and, and working with people, I realized that any person who I'm going to work with now must have a certain, must agree to a certain level of uh, certain values and simple values such as being honest, being in integrity, being transparent, being on time, being, you know, these simple things that affects actually the big results later on. And so the, going into joint ventures happened by accident. And I'll tell you what happened. When I was running my small computer company, Later on, when I was trying to fix it, one of the th concepts I learned was uh, referral marketing and business networking. And so I joined uh, BNI at the time, Business Network International, um, which is the largest business referral organization in the world. And in that chapter, there was a gentleman who had a computer software company, computer software, computer business. And my focus at that time my small business was focused on creating e-commerce websites, internet websites uh, back in those days. And he had a conversation with me. He said, I've got this referral with you, for you, which is part of what the chapters do. 
And I took the referral and he was, he said he had, um, he had some feedback that the service I provided to his client, because I didn't know it was his client he was referring me to, was absolutely great. And he had a conversation and he said, Mac, I have all these clients who want these websites. And we're talking about in 2004 or five, it's still, you know, websites were still in its infancy. People had them, but it wasn't, it's not like we have it now and you can create your own. And would you be willing to service them? Would you be willing to help them? And I'm thinking, I, I'm looking for new clients and you're going to give me all these clients and I've got to look after them. And that's how it started. And so any business I went in after, and so I, so I thought if this computer company wants to give me all these clients and, um, and it was all done on a, on a handshake, nothing written. And what about the accountant? What about the lawyer? Do they have clients? They do they have similar clients that may need my services? So I started speaking to those type of people. And instead of, you know, advertising, I would get a lot of business through referrals and through joint ventures. But again, only with people um, that I had certain values that I've gone along with. Have I been stung in joint ventures before? Yes. And so I've got this these six steps, which I can share with you in a moment, in terms of how do you create great joint ventures. 